Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 6 in our campaign game with the Hunters, GMT Games U-Boat Simulation where you get to command a U-Boat in the World War II Atlantic Campaign. We've survived five patrols so far and if we make it through this next patrol, we'll have served an entire year in the Atlantic Campaign. If there's anything that can be said about our campaign so far, it's that we haven't really seen a lot of action. Our sunk tonnage is relatively marginal, and we just haven't run into the enemy very often either. But we all know that's going to change pretty soon. Is this the mission where things get real? Or will we have yet another milk run to add to our long litany of easy patrols? Let's get started and find out. All right, let's come in and do a little quick recap here. Five patrols so far. We've had five successes. If our sixth patrol now is a success, we'll have another crew advancement at the end. And second watch officer Ray did reach the expert level after our third patrol. We also picked up on our last patrol the Lucky Horseshoe, which will give us one reroll of any whirl that we want and it's an expendable item. So that's nice to have in our pocket. And with that being said, it's time to kind of figure out where we're going to patrol. So let's get our sixth patrol underway here. We're leaving from France now instead of Germany. So let's see where we end up patrolling. The possible areas have shifted now that we're into August of 1940. We can see that we have three possible areas. The Spanish coast could be one of our patrol zones. We could get assigned to the Atlantic, which would involve convoys, or back to the British Isles, which we've grown kind of familiar with. And we are shifting again. You can see we're not leaving from Germany. As I mentioned, we're leaving from the uh, French U-boat uh, pens, which means that we have a Bay of Biscay transit, which is a little bit more difficult than our previous transits. So uh, let's, uh, with a roll of one, we can pick our own target destination. Let's see if we get that opportunity. Get a four. So we do not. That means we're going to have to roll on the dice here. Now, also notice that number four is an agent mission, which would be something we haven't done yet, but let's see what we get. A three. Spanish coast. Interesting. I think we did our first patrol down there, if I'm not mistaken, but that will be an interesting patrol. I think uh, a different kind of range of possible targets here. So let's get our U-boat underway. Off we go. All right, so U-86 heads out of its U-boat pens into the Bay of Biscay, and you'll notice that compared to our previous transit zones, a roll of a three, a two, three, or four has an aircraft in it. Before it was just a two or a three. So we're still hoping for big dice rolls here. Seven. Ooh, I saw the one come up, and then I thought, uh-oh, we're in trouble. So we make it through the Bay of Biscay safely. Now let's go into our regular transit zone. This one is a little bit safer. Only a roll of a two or a three would create problems for us. Hoping again for a big roll. 10. Okay, so no problems. We are through the transit zones and into the Spanish coast patrolling area. So let's see if we can get some targets of opportunity here. So for this one, we'll be rolling. It would be nice to get. Oh, looks like this is actually pretty good. A six or a seven brings up a straight ship. That might be kind of nice for us. Here we go. Hoping for a six or a seven. Five. A five is a ship plus an escort. So this is, I think, our first time since we've run into an escort, since our earliest mission, perhaps. Or I think maybe there was one in a second mission, but we escaped it undetected. But let's go after it. Targets of opportunity. Time to get going. So the first thing we are aware of, we have an escort in the sea escort box, so we have to be aware of that. Now we have to make a roll whether it's day or night, hoping for nighttime here with the escort present. Ah, we get a three, which means it is daytime, not the best roll there. That'll give us an interesting decision here now too. Let's see what type of ship this is. We get a four, which is a large freighter. That means we'll have to roll now to identify the large freighter. Oh, if it's a rich target here, this is an interesting decision. A 95 on the large freighter opportunity. Yeah, 95 gives us the Robert E. Lee at 5,200 tons. So a large freighter less than 10,000 tons will be here on the three hit marker. Now the question that we have right now is, do we want to wait for day for nighttime or do we want to try to engage in the day? If we do wait for night, on a would I roll of a five or a six, we would lose the target. Let's think about this for a second. All right, considering that this is our first zone and if we attack during the day, we're going to be more easily detected by the escort. 
we're gonna take the risk here of rolling and waiting for night. I think that we'll have opportunities later if we do this. One, two, or one, two, three, or four. It shifts the night, and we're okay. Ah, bloody god! So we lost our target on the die roll of six, and that ends the encounter in this zone. Darn it! God, that's frustrating. Oh well. All right, having lost the Robert E. Lee, we move into our second zone here. It's making me a little bit nervous. I feel like that might not have been the right decision. Let's see what happens here. We get an eight, which is nothing. Ah, God, kicking myself now for waiting for that. We move to our third zone, hunting for enemy shipping. Something good. Seven, ship. Yes, excellent. Okay, no escorts involved. Let's set this one up. All right, so once again, a one to three, it's daytime. Although unescorted, it doesn't seem to really matter. Two, it is daytime again, so we'll set that there. Now there are no escorts involved, so we'll just move that in there, and that one, that box stays blank. Now let's roll for what type of ship we get. We can come in nice, get a big tanker, six, five, a large freighter, okay. Still not bad here. Let's see if we get, it'd be nice to get something 10,000 tons or more. Let's see what we get. For our large freighter, a 96. Can we just roll a 95? 96, 6,400 ton Triglav. All right, so at 6,400 tons, a large freighter is still less than 10,000 tons. So we'll put it right here on the three hitbox, and we will now set up our combat. All right, as is our pattern with an unescorted freighter to attack, we're going to come in with our deck gun firing first. We'll take two shots. We need an eight or less to hit, and there are no modifications to it. So let's fire away here. First shot is a 10. Ooh, sails wide. That's not good. Second shot, a nine. God, we are not dialed in here. So both of our shots miss. Let's transition to our next attack. So next, let's fire with all four torpedoes in the, in the bow tubes. Uh, basically, we have one zone left after this, so I'm hopeful that we can get it with these tor with these torpedoes here. We need an eight or less normally at close range, but because it's an unescorted surface torpedo, we get minus one, so we need nines or less. Let's get four big hits here. Eleven, what is wrong with our crew? Come on. Seven, there we go. So we get one hit. Six, two hits. Okay, we're starting to find the range now. And five, excellent. Three hits, nice. Now we need to roll immediately to see how many of these are duds. For the steam torpedoes in 1940 now, we're up a year, it's still, however, a one to two. So we get three torpedoes, three hits, let's see how many are duds, hopefully zero. Oh, goodness gracious. So we get two duds and only one hits. Now we have to roll for damage. We still could be okay, because on a die roll of a one or a two, We'll do four damage with the one and three damage with the two. Let's get lucky here. We need three damage to sink it. Let's put on the hit here. Oh gosh, a six is one damage. So we have damaged the large freighter, but it is still chugging along. So now our question is whether we want to follow or not. Let's think about that decision. Wait one second. First uh, watch officer McLeod just reminded me that we can fire our aft torpedo at this without penalty because it's an unescorted target here. So we get one more torpedo shot. If we get lucky, we might be able to still take this out. So let's get our torpedo off and running. 10, we need nine or less, it missed. Gah, we're awful today. Our team U-boat is, is just struggling here. Now our choice is whether to follow and pursue or to whether let this target escape. Alrighty, so we're gonna pursue. So in order to succeed at this, we have to roll for an additional round of combat on this chart here. On a two or a three, we're detected by an escort. On a four or five, it's an aircraft. We're looking for a six or above to be able to have another round of combat on this. And in the meantime too, we can reload our torpedoes. So we'll put four more steam torpedoes in. Actually, let's put four electrics in to the front to the four tubes we're going to load up our electric torpedoes and then we're also going to load our aft torpedo with uh, another steam torpedo so we'll I, I think if we get another round of combat we're going to be able to sink it pretty easily so let's burn up these electrics and save the steam for our final box patrol box just in case we can use them there so hoping for a big number here 
An eight. Excellent. No detection. So we get another free round of combat. Let's see if we can put this Triglav to the bottom of the ocean. All right, so we have reloaded our deck gun again. We get two shots this time. At close range, we need eight or less. Let's get some hits on this. Eight. Excellent. One more hit, and this would finish it off now. Six. Perfect. Four, actually. Sorry. Perfect. Two hits. The minimum damage it can do is two, so we have recovered nicely in our second round here. Let's see what kind of damage we get with the deck gun, but it's just really a matter of course now. A four and a two does two damage. That is enough to sink the Triglav. Finally, a stubborn target. Actually, not so much a stubborn target, just as our crew showed some uncharacteristically incompetent firing there. So, <laughs> but the Triglav goes to the bottom of the ocean, and we can continue on with our patrol. All right, let's get U-86 moving on to its final patrol zone here. Hoping for another six or a seven to get an unescorted ship. That would be pretty cool. We get a nine. An eight, nine. Ah, oh, gosh, nothing. We continue, continually seem to get one ship on a patrol. Ah, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's continue on. We're going to head into the uh, transit zone then. We're heading our way home here. It's nice that we did get something sunk, so we've got to pass through our first transit zone here. Looking for anything greater than a three to be able to safely transit this. We get an eight, which moves us through this into the Bay of Biscay. Bay of Biscay, which is a little bit more dangerous. For this one, we need anything a five or above. Hoping to safely make it back to port in France. A seven, and we do. So, we managed to sink the Triglav, which gives us our sixth consecutive successful mission, which means we will have a crew advancement. So let's go in and refit U-86, uh, do a summary of the mission, and see what kind of crew advancement we get. Alrighty, so let's uh, rearrange the torpedoes here on U-86 as it sits in the pen here, and we're going to refit it for our next mission. It'll take us a month to refit, so it was that was August of 1940. We will spend September of 1940 in France, and then back out into the sea for mission number for patrol number seven in October of 1940. We'll put our gun back in, but let's just kind of summarize this one as well. Another successful mission, so six patrols and six successful missions with seven ships sunk in total. In this one, of course, we put down the 6,500-ton Triglav, a large freighter giving us a total tonnage now of 34,100 tons. Still about 16,000 tons short of avoiding the defeat category were we to be sunk in our next patrol that would leave us still short of any kind of a victory, any kind of a draw level in this game. We got a long way to go because 100,000 tons is the, the, vic the first level of victory if you were to, even if you get sunk after 100,000 tons, your victory level is determined by how many tons you have at the point you get sunk. So we have to kind of head to 100,000 or so to kind of win, technically, the game. But we also have a couple of very important things to check out because we've now had six successful missions. That gives us another multiple of three. So it's time to roll for a crew advancement. Now, I did check. If we do roll a four, that would fall on the second watch officer, watch officer Ray. But he's already an expert, so that wouldn't count. So the last thing we don't want is to roll a four. If we roll a one or a two, that would be our engineer and our doctor. A three would be our first watch officer. All those would be good. And a five or a six would be the crew to advance. So let's see what we get. We want anything but a four, a two. So a two is our doctor. Dr. David picks up an expertise level. So let's drop that on him. That is actually very helpful because what that does is if we have wounded crew members, I think what it, there's a few roles that he can influence where he can keep seriously wounded crew members alive and I think reduce some of their wounds and patch them up and stuff like that. So that seems like a pretty good one to get in the case where we're starting to get attacked. So that will be helpful to have an expert doctor on board and congratulations to Dr. David. Now, the other thing that we need to do is to roll on a promotion for us. And for this one here, I think it's just a straight, let me just double check, it's a straight one die roll for our com commander here. And we have to roll a one to four with, let's see, there, there are some dice roll modifiers here. Per award of the Knight's Cross, nope, we don't have that. For every 10 ships sunk during the 12 month period, nope, we got seven, so we fell three shot short. Plus one for each unsuccessful patrol. We didn't have any of those. So no dice roll modifiers on this. 
It means just we roll one die, on a one to four, we get a pr promotion to Corvette and Capitan. On this five or a six, we stay at the same level. Getting promotion to Corvette and Capitan would give us, uh, we could choose our missions, our patrol zones on a one or a two, which would be nice. And we can shorten our refit time in cases where it's three to four months. So let's get, let's get promoted here, huh? Yes, nice. All right, so we are a Corvette and Capitan. Yes, level three in the Kriegsmarine. Congratulations to our promotion there. And I think that brings us now to the end here. So, so far so good. I mean, it, I'm not sure if this is usual or not, but we haven't seen the enemy since our first mission. It's, it's, we, and you know, talking a little bit about lucky boats and stuff like that. Got the little lucky horseshoe now. We, we've been pretty fortunate, I think. And I keep thinking things are going to change. But that was a fun patrol. I mean, it's too bad we it, we, we lost track of that first ship. Because that would have been nice to get two ships. And still, I think the general thing, we've mentioned it before, is we're a little bit short. We're a bit at light on tonnage. This is really the hunting years. Because things are going to get a lot harder. But we'll get back at it and try again. We'll refit in September. And we'll see you in October of 1940 for our... Seventh patrol. So far, so good. Fingers crossed. We're a lucky boat and can keep this up. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. If you've enjoyed it, uh, please give it a thumbs up as it helps the algorithms for the channel so much. And then uh, if you're new, please consider subscribing. We should be back in a few days with our seventh patrol.